Thank you. Thank you all uh, very much. Mrs. Rajavi, it's a pleasure to see you. General Clark, Senator Brownback, <laughs> Governor Locke, and friends. I was, in listening to Vice President Pence, I was thinking of 30, 35 years ago, as a young member of Congress, I would meet with members of the MEK in basements in Maryland and Virginia. <laughs> Five and ten people at a time. I would tell my friends in the Congress that I had spent the night before a meeting with members of the MEK, and they looked at me like I had no idea what I was talking about. Today, I sat in a room in Washington, D.C., and I heard members of the MEK addressed by the former Vice President of the United States. Probably probably the most decorated, most highly respected officer of the United States Army in our generation. And two of the finest public officials who served as governor and senator that you will meet in the United States. How far we have come! Mrs. Rajivy, how far you have brought us! Now, I, I'm loath to admit this, but the simple truth is, I have probably been in Washington in public office longer than anyone in the room. Long enough that I can say this with authority. I have signed letters for the security of Israel. I have led letters for the unity of Ireland. I have led letters for recognizing the suffering of the Armenian people. And I've signed anything Italy wanted. <laughs> but I have never, in my many years in this city, in this Congress, ever seen 225 members of Congress sign a letter for Iranian freedom in a bipartisan unity unlike anything I've ever seen. And if there are those still in the regime who believe that as time passes, disunity will come, we will lose our focus, we will lose our way. To those Ayatollahs, read that letter, watch what we say, watch what we do. We are going to nowhere but Tehran in a new regime. So, we have So, so many of us have met on so many occasions. I, the faces are familiar. Some of the words are the same. But somehow, something is fundamentally different. We meet this day in this room, and you know something has changed. The pot has been boiling. Pressure has been building. It has been coming for years, and it is about to boil over in a new revolution in Iran. You can feel it. You can feel it, you can taste it, it is in your hands. Thinking about the students who've left their classrooms, the mothers who have watched their sons and daughters leave home to take to the streets, 
the workers that close their shops. It is mounting like a tide. And the day will come, as General Clark has suggested, that among them will be the soldiers who take off their uniforms and stand not with the mullahs, but with the people. That is the final day of this revolution. But even without the regime having fallen, we are close enough to have an honest conversation. Because we did not fight all these years. All the young Iranians did not lose their lives. People have not languished in jail. People have not been tortured to be denied again. The Iranian people had a revolution, and it was stolen. It will not be stolen again by anyone. this act before. The train starts leaving the station, headed to victory. And as it's leaving, people try to grab on board. I got it. I got it. Be careful of it. Be careful of it. Everyone is welcome to this cause. Everyone. Iranian and non-Iranian. The past is the past. We're moving forward. But we are not exchanging a theocracy for another kleptocracy. To our friends who have lived the good life behind the gilded gates of their Beverly Hills homes, and those who have enjoyed the good life in the hills of Switzerland, we welcome you to the cause, but we are not, we have not fought, we have not died, we have not struggled to replace one dictatorship with another dictatorship, it will not happen. This time, democracy. This time, the people. The people. It is about the people of Iran. This revolution, this revolution is no one's financial opportunity. It is everyone's opportunity to live free and breathe free. This is different. There are so many heroes in this struggle, even as it goes on, but some are worth noting. I take nothing from those who stand at the barricades, who will put everything on the line. But the fact is, revolutions don't happen by chance. There are leaders. There are always some whose head is a little bit above the crowd. To the leader of every revolutionary cell in Iran, everyone who organized friends and neighbors, every member of the MEK in Iran who assured that the struggle would go on, history will never forget you. We will never forget you. There are many heroes, but there are none like you. To the MEK in Iran who have risked everything, whose very actions are a cause for their execution, God bless you. We thank you. History will be yours. Now, in any struggle, in any struggle, in any mass movement, just as the hour gets close to victory, there will always be those who say, but it would be faster if we would compromise. It would be easier if we would take a little less. It would be better if we would broaden the coalition to those who have a different vision of the future. Not this time. Our vision is clear. 
It is Mrs. Rajavi's 10-point plan. Iran will be democratic. <laughs> women will be respected with equal rights. It will be non-nuclear. It will be at peace with its neighbors and its friends. It will assure a quality, free life for the Iranian people. There will be no compromise. We will stand for no less. My friends, uh, I cannot tell you the day this will happen. But as more than a few speakers have said to you today, there is an inevitability about the cause of freedom. A great people with one of the world's richest cultures, one of the foundations of civilization, will not be bound in chains forever. Another generation of Iranian mothers and children will not see their children raised in poverty. Being Iranian should not mean that not only you are not free, but you are destitute. That is not in any law of God or man. It has happened because a revolution was stolen, and we are committed that it will end. This generation of Iranians must join the prosperity that has lifted boats all around the world. People in every corner of the globe are finding a new prosperity, a new way to live, a new respect for human rights and human liberties. Women throughout the globe are finding equality in their lives and their opportunities. By what measure, by what logic would a single nation be different? The poison that has destroyed lives for a generation of Iranians is spreading. The Iranian people now are to be part of what is happening in the Ukraine, oppressing those people. They're to be in league with the North Koreans or the Chinese. That is not the history of Iran. It is not who you are. This ship will be righted. I have said to you many times before, but I repeat it again to those who may hear my voice for the first time. There are two kinds of Iranians. Those who are part of this movement and those who will spend the rest of their lives denying that they weren't part of this movement. Every Iranian, whether you live in Iran or part of the diaspora, will be accountable. Your children and their children are going to ask, in those days of 2023, when people were on the streets and your nation was enslaved, whether you lived in Beverly Hills or New York or London or in a city or town in Iran, where were you, Dad? Mom? Grandpa? Where were you? What did you do? How did our family end the nightmare and change the course of Iranian history? My only suggestion to this is whether you're hearing my voice in Tehran or London or Paris, you better have an answer because your children are going to demand one. Stand with this woman. Maryam Rajavi, stand with the MEK, stand with the Iranian people, be part of the future, put an end to the past. Revolution. Thank you.